What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Michael Chandler provides huge update on fight. Conor McGregor recently submitted his paperwork to USADA, signaling to the world that his return to action is officially on the horizon, while also giving fans plenty to look forward to in the new year. Currently, the speculation is that he and Michael Chandler will collide at UFC 300, which is expected to take place in April. The timeline would give McGregor six months to make it through the necessary testing under USADA. And from the sounds of Michael Chandler's recent tweet, McGregor's plan to return has led to a surprise visit from USADA for him as well. As he wrote, got a visit from USADA today. Timing is always on point. Ball is rolling. See you soon. As of October 10th, McGregor had yet to register his first official test with USADA. However, Dana White recently indicated that he expected McGregor to be considered in the testing pool at some point early this week, meaning that the countdown may officially be on to his return. Shout out to our first comments on yesterday's video. Thanks for the support. Next up, let's take a look at Aljamain Sterling makes shocking prediction. With no official word from Dana White on what the promotion has in store for Sugar Sean O'Malley's first title defense, there's been plenty of speculation that the champ could wind up defending his title against Marlon Chito Vera. The situation has been a hot subject of debate among fans who have continued to go back and forth regarding who should get the next crack at the belt. During a recent video for his YouTube channel, former bantamweight champion Aljamain Sterling gave his thoughts on how he believes a potential rematch between the two could play out. He's not one punching Cheeto unless Cheeto was to run forward the same way I did and get sniped. It's not happening. Cheeto stands in the same spot mm. and he's gonna sit there, be patient, walk him down, hands up. He's gonna throw those long kicks. He's very durable. I think we've seen that even with the Sanhagen fight. He's got a great gas tank. Sean gets tired. Just watch it from, don't, don't but, listen to me and think it like I'm being a hater. I'm not being a hater. I'm just calling it what it is. I'm saying there is a very good chance that Cheeto is gonna get this upset so far, all we know about O'Malley's next fight is that the UFC has reportedly indicated to him that they want him to headline a card, with UFC 297 expected to be headlined by Alexander Volkanovsky and Ilya Topuria in January, it seems as though fans may have to wait until a potential UFC 298 card in February to see Sugar Sean defend his belt. Next up, let's take a look at Promotion Fires Back at Dana White When Dana White stated in September that there aren't any exciting kickboxing matches, fans were quick to pull the statistics from the Tenshin Nasukawa and Takeru Segawa matchup that took place at the Tokyo Dome in 2022. The event saw nearly 60,000 fans attend the showdown, which also reportedly generated quite a bit of revenue as well. On the heels of one championship's Chachu Sidyotong, calling K1 kickboxing low-level, Ryzen boss Nobuyuki Sakakibara has taken aim at both he and White for their criticisms, while speaking in an interview with MMA Mania on Broaden Horizon. I, I don't appreciate them talking like that. I think that's an issue on their personal level because the kickboxing is, is an amazing sport. It's a fun sport. And if as a promoter, if you cannot promote that sport, you shouldn't be doing it. And I think there are a lot of appeals that have great fights and great ways to promote a kickboxing fight. Um, kickboxing is interesting. It's an entertaining sport. With White poised to speak to media members between now and UFC 294 on October 21st, he's likely to field questions regarding Sakaki Barra's comments sooner rather than later. Now, let's shift gears and take a look at Sean O'Malley Talks New John Jones Footage. Recently, UFC heavyweight champion John Jones and pound for pound jujitsu kingpin Gordon Ryan posted photos and videos from a training session with one another. While Ryan made headlines for potentially confirming that this would in fact be Jones' final fight inside the octagon, the footage of the two rolling quickly went viral as well. During a recent episode of the Timbo Sugar Show, UFC bantamweight champion Sugar Sean O'Malley gave his thoughts on the footage of the two and a post from Jones indicating that he was going to have a hard time sleeping after training with Ryan. John Jones says he's not wasn't going to be able to sleep after he grappled with Gordon. He's so humbled. His ego hurt so bad. When Miocic and Jones collide in November, the former champ is eager to give Jones a proper test at heavyweight. As he explained in the lead up to the fight, he doesn't believe that Jones' quick win over Cyril Ghosn saw him face a true test in his heavyweight debut. When the two men collide at UFC 295, Miocic will look to overcome ring rust and recapture heavyweight gold, while becoming the first person to truly defeat Jones. Next, let's take a look at UFC Fight Updates. Before this weekend's UFC Fight Night event at the Apex, several exciting bouts have been added to upcoming cards in early 2024, starting with the clash between Gabriel Santos 
and Weston Wilson at UFC Vegas 83, which will take place on January 13th. The fight will see Santos look to snap a two-fight skid that has seen him go 0-2 this year since signing with the UFC. On the flip side, Wilson will be looking to bounce back from a loss to Joe Anderson Brito this summer that snapped a winning streak of his own. Next up, we have a clash between Jillian Robertson and Pollyanna Vienna, which will take place at UFC 297 on January 20th. The bout will see Robertson look to bounce back from a loss to Tabitha Ricci this summer, while Vienna will be looking to bounce back from an August loss to Yasmin Lucindo. In addition, reports have emerged that Alexander Volkanovsky and Ilya Toporia have agreed to headline the UFC 297 card on January 20th, meaning the countdown to Volkanovsky's return may officially be on. In other news, this week also saw an unfortunate update regarding UFC Fight Night China, where Peter Yan has been forced to withdraw from his scheduled main event showdown with Song Yadong. Based on the report from MMA Ecosystems' Chris Presnell, the UFC is looking for a replacement opponent for Song Yadong in order to keep him on the card. Stay tuned for updates as they become available. Next, let's take a look at Joe Rogan Talks Francis Ngannou vs Tyson Fury In just a few short weeks, Francis Ngannou and Tyson Fury will collide in a highly anticipated showdown. While Fury is heading into the bout as the overwhelming betting favorite, Ngannou has made it clear that he plans to play spoiler and hand Fury his first professional loss inside the ring. As the promotion for the contest ramps up, longtime UFC commentator Joe Rogan recently gave his thoughts on the bout during a recent episode of the Joe Rogan Experience. Francis is going to have this boxing match with Tyson Fury. I mean, Tyson Fury is one of the greatest, if not the greatest heavyweight of all time. Mm. He's so good. He's so slick. His footwork, his movement, the way he sets traps and catches people. He's so clever. He's so skilled. He's been unstoppable as a heavyweight boxer. <clears throat> Francis is a big, powerful knockout artist. That's undeniable. But, you know, the advantage obviously goes to Tyson Fury. It's his sport. He's the best, one of the best, if not the best ever at his sport. Yeah. He's so f good and he's so clever. <laughs> While Fury has his sights set on a boxing match with Alexander Yusik, Nganu is eager to play spoiler to the Gypsy King's plans when the two collide. Next, let's take a look at Fighter Sends Warning to Paulo Costa. Although Paulo Costa has continued to indicate that he has no plans of withdrawing from his scheduled UFC 294 clash with Hamza Chimaev, UFC veteran Ala Juban recently took to Twitter to give a cautionary tale regarding the same surgery Costa underwent. As Juban wrote, Did Costa say what the surgery was from? Because it looks like bursitis where they removed it. I've got the same scar, and I tried coming back too soon and opened the whole thing up and had to have it restitched three weeks later. Costa then responded, confirming that he did in fact have the same procedure done by writing, Yes, same brother, unfortunately. As Juban went on to reveal, his elbow opened up after he threw an elbow in training while wearing elbow pads, meaning Costa's elbow could be hindering his training for the bout. With the fight between he and Chimaev right around the corner, whether or not Costa is able to compete at UFC 294 may not be up to him. Dana White said on a press conference last night that it's possible that Paulo Costa versus Hamzat is off. Paulo Costa went public and said he had surgery three weeks ago. Is there any danger that that fight could be off? Uh, yeah, it's possible. When do you think we'll get a verdict on if he's going to be able to fight or not? Very soon. Okay. Very soon. Is there another Unless another fucking big mouth pops up out of somewhere and you know what I mean? So, yeah. Hopefully within a couple hours I'll have an answer for you. Hamzat then reacted to Dana White's comments at the press conference on X by saying, Pavlovich Buratina, what's happening? And then tweeted, with anyone, Dana White, showing a screenshot of the UFC's middleweight rankings, while Paulo Costa finally broke silence on the situation by saying, I'm not pulling out this fight anyway. Let me fight the f gourmet Chen Chen. I am here in Abu Dhabi already and prepared, mother f where someone responded with, Once you disclose the injury, it would be tough for any athletic commission to allow you to fight, recover to full health, and hope to see you and Hamzat in the octagon at some point. To which Paulo fired back with, Whole UFC staff knows it since day one, bro. Once you're admitted at the hospital, they need to reach out to USADA, and everybody knows everything about you. I did surgery and still training to fight after that, and everyone knows it. I really want smoke, that guy. Daniel Cormier reacted to the news about Paulo Costa pulling out of UFC 294. Here's what he had to say. And if this cool main event comes together, as Dana said last night, he doesn't know Apollo fights. If they can put together the cool main event that I'm hearing that is in the works, you guys will actually lose your minds. Fans are speculating that Costa's replacement is Kamaru Usman. If this is the case, then Hamza might fight against Kamaru on short notice. Gilbert Burns posted a video showing Kamaru Usman training. A lot of crazy news yesterday, but you know what? Someone's getting ready. 
always getting ready. Look at these guys. What's up, everybody? You know what we've been dealing with this week. We just got the big fight done yesterday, the highly anticipated rematch in Abu Dhabi, the main event, uh, Makachev versus Volkanovski. Now you've been waiting for the co-main event. Costa's hurt. You know, all the rumors that are flying around, we got it done. So, the number four welterweight in the world, Hamzat Chemaev, is moving up the middleweight, and he will face the number one welterweight in the world, Kamaru Usman. So, number one versus number four at middleweight, Usman versus Chemaev. I will see you in Abu Dhabi. Charles Oliveira pulled out of UFC 294 due to a cut on his eyebrow on the fifth round of a sparring session. He reacted to the situation saying, In my final training in Brazil before traveling, I clashed heads in training and suffered a deep cut that needed eight or nine stitches. It's a cut too deep to be able to fight, to recover in such short time, and be able to put on a great fight. I know many people will judge, many people will talk, but it's an important fight for us and we couldn't be there at our 80%. We had to be 120% ready for it. Alexander Volkanovsky is set as the backup and is now in against Islam Makachev. Islam sent a warning to Volkanovsky on Twitter saying, Respect for taking this fight on short notice, Alex, but don't use it as an excuse after the fight. Islam reacted to this news in an interview. Here's what he had to say. My manager Ali sent me a message, hey, your opponent pull out, and I just give him a message back to hey, find someone doesn't matter who is gonna be i go to again sleep and i wake up to the training and he sent me the pictures it's gonna be second round with volkanovsky it's not big surprise for me because what he lose he take fights before 10 days short notice he will come he don't put his belt but he just make money that's it Habib also came out in an interview and had this to say about the situation. I, I told Ali, I told Islam today morning, brother, doesn't matter, you're the world champion. Volk, Charles, Pori, or Justin, like, doesn't matter, bro. Like, it's supposed to be Charles, okay. He pull out, but we already beat him and we don't care about this. Uh, we have five more hard days for training and uh, we're ready for Abu Dhabi. Inshallah, let's go. USADA announces its departure from the UFC. They put out an official statement that had this quote in it. As of January 1st, 2024, USADA will no longer be involved with the UFC anti-doping program. Despite a positive and productive meeting about a contract renewal in May 2023, the UFC did an about face and informed USADA on Monday, October 9th, that it was going in a different direction. Top comments. Bobby Green is salty because he never got dominated and felt helpless this way before the way he did against Islam Makachev. Simple as that. Why are people saying Paulo is making an excuse? He showed the nasty injury and said he is still game. Jake ain't entering the world of Diaz because he'll end up in a triangle choke for sure. UFC can pay fighter whose fight was canceled, but the other guy wasn't feeling good. But what about paying Stephen Wonderboy Thompson? Dana shouldn't have said that they paid the fighter in his interview. Make sure to leave a comment and you might get featured in our next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to never miss any MMA news. Check out our video from yesterday if you missed it. See you tomorrow.